Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how I added forced air to the cheapest flash dryer I could find. It starts by creating a two-scale 3D model for the sheet metal work. This flash dryer has an effective area of 18 by 24 inches. I modeled it on the computer so I could easily get a pattern for the tapered sheet metal shapes I'll have to cut. Then I flattened those shapes and brought them into Photoshop where I traced them out to size. Because they're so large, I need to print this out in pieces and tape the printouts together. Once that's done, it's a matter of tracing them onto Bristol board. The paper's just too thin and flimsy to work with. Once I've got those Bristol board shapes, I can cut everything out and mock it up in place on the flash dryer. When I'm happy with that, I trace everything onto aluminum sheet. Before I can continue with the sheet metal, I need to disassemble the unit. I need to drill holes for the air to get through, and I don't know what's inside, so I need to take it apart. There's several screws, but there's also a lot of rivets that'll need to be drilled out. There's a sheet of heat insulation between the outer black shell and the inner aluminum heat shield that will need to be removed before I start drilling. After I get the entire thing apart, I mark out the location of the holes and drill. I've decided to orient them in a way so they blow between the heating elements, not over them. Then I grind down the burrs. This is a brass tube, one quarter inch OD. I got this from a hobby store. I have to put the heat shield back in so I can drill the holes through both pieces at the same time and they line up. I flare the ends of the brass tube pieces with a brake line flaring tool. This ensures the tubes won't fall through the holes. I was going to glue or solder them in, but I worried that the high heat might cause problems. Whatever I use might let go and they might fall through. Once the holes are drilled, the heat shield can be removed. The insulation put back and the heat shield riveted back in place. Here's what it looks like with all the tubes in place. Now to bend the sheet metal I cut earlier. I'm using a small metal brake for this as well as some pliers. Once I get a few pieces done, I drill a hole and put one rivet in to tack it in place while I test fit the other pieces. Once I'm happy that everything looks good, I go ahead and put in the rest of the rivets. Here's what it looks like at this stage. The next thing is to fill in any holes. They'll cause a loss in airflow. I'm using stove cement for this. It's good up to 1100 degrees. Now I scuff it up with sandpaper and give it a shot of black spray paint. I didn't bother with high temp paint since I don't think these panels will get very hot. And that's it for the sheet metal work. On to the electronics. I designed this fan holder in 3D and printed it on my Ender 3. I've got this 90mm 12V case fan. I've got a couple of different fans, but for this one I went with a fairly powerful one, which also means it's pretty noisy. I wanted to make sure I could adjust airflow if need be, so I'm using a buck converter to make the voltage adjustable. The 12 volt power supply feeds into the buck converter, which can then be turned down to whatever fan speed you need. I just removed the small variable resistor on the board and replaced it with a larger knob type that I can turn on the fly. When I test this, you can see the voltage change. I modeled and printed a 3D box to put everything into. This is where I'll mount the box to the dryer. It doesn't get very hot back here. I'll drill a hole through the box and the flash to run the wire to the power fan. I'll tap directly into the existing wire coming into the back of the flash unit. That way I can run the heater and fan independently. I think I'll run the fan for 30 minutes after turning the heater off, just to make sure the heat doesn't rise and melt anything. I ended up adding a push button switch to the lid as well. And that's it. I hope this video has inspired some of you just getting into screen printing. You don't need a lot of money to start, you can build and modify equipment. Anyway, click that like and subscribe button and thanks for watching.